I'm Eddie Conway coming to you from Baltimore. Welcome to The Real News. Uh, recently, after the election of uh, Trump and his administration, there's been a renewed effort to open up the Constitution for changes. And Article 5 in the uh, Constitution allows for X amount of states to uh, decide or even a certain number of people in the Congress to decide that they want to amend the Constitution. Uh, what's important about this time is that it seems like it's the most serious effort to uh, open the Constitution and change some of the laws that protects us and affects us. So I have with me today uh, Max Pothis, uh, from New Abolitionist uh, Radio, who has been looking at this, and he's going to try to explain some of it to us, and so we can get an understanding of just how serious this might be. Uh, Max? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, hello again, Brother Eddie. It's good to be here with you. Okay. Uh, could you talk to us about this movement of foot uh, with this new uh, Constitution Convention effort? Yes. Uh, well, let me put, like you said, this is a very serious circumstance. It's the first in the history of our nation since 1787, I believe, was the last constitutional convention. It's a back door into the Constitution in order to go into it and be able to change amendments, add amendments, and so on and so forth. There is, of course, a process involved, and that process is ongoing right now as we speak, and it has uh, really gained a lot of momentum of the 34 states required in order to get, uh, get a constitutional convention, we have already seen 10 sign on, two within the last 60 days or so uh, have signed on. I have a full list of all the 10 states. Uh, the movement itself is sponsored by some very high profile industries like the American Le uh, Legislative Exchange Council, also known as ALEC, as well as there's involvement with the Koch brothers and George Soros, who are both buying to gain control of this. Now, this constitutional convention is like a, a separate thing altogether. Several organizations and groups are vying to take control of it and to manipulate it and put in what they want to put in. From what I understand, at least one group has about 11 amendments that are already listed that they wish to propose to the constitution, and that's from the Adam Lev the Mark Levin group. And then there's another group uh, which has four amendments that they're looking to propose. It seems to me that Alex, uh, Alex, the, that group right there, doesn't care which group wins as long as there is a constitutional convention. It seems to me like that is their main goal so that they can take whatever weight and money they have to be able to come in and then take control at that time. Let me tell you what a constitutional convention is. <clears throat> it's a gathering for the purpose of writing a new constitution or revising an existing constitution. Members of a constitutional convention, sometimes referred to as delegates to a constitutional convention, are elected by popular vote. Um, and as I said, the last time we saw this was in 1787. Uh, if you have any questions, I can answer. If not, more that I could tell you about it and why I'm so concerned and why everybody else should be concerned too. Well, yeah, I do. Uh, I'm curious because I was kind of looking at it. I mean, you know, it came across uh, the radar with me a month or two ago. And then I, I, I thought back about it and I realized that the uh, Black Panther Party had actually proposed a constitution convention back in uh, uh, seven, uh, 1976. Uh, and uh, that was an effort to go in and rewrite some of the Constitution so that it would be uh, in favor of people down on the ground, poor people, black people, uh, uh, other, other minorities and people that has been suffering oppression in America. And so I said, well, okay, that was an effort that we had put forth, but then I look at this effort and it seems to be coming from the Tea Party, the extreme right, and it seems to be in the interest of dismantling the government. Uh, you said there's 10 states already signed on to it. What, yes. what are their issues? What do they want? 
Um, as I said, the two groups who are primary leading this have a list of things that they're looking for. The Mark Levin group uh, has 11 amendments. Uh, I'll give you one or two of them. For example, top of their uh, list is term limits. He proposes limiting service in both the House and the Senate to 12 years. And uh, they said they've heard all the arguments about elections being the best limit, but the last 100 years has proven that to be false. As someone who works day and night to throw the bums out, I can tell you that it's nearly impossible to throw them out, uh, throw, throw them out with the money, uh, amount of money they raise precisely for their abuses of power. Levin also proves that limiting time in office has a highly regarded proposal during their Constitution of co Congress. This is their own writing on the website. Uh, and one other one I'll just read. I won't read the description too much of it, but let's say number six, defining the Commerce Clause. Levin writes an amendment that, while technically unnecessary, is practically an imperative re to restoring the original intent of the Commerce Clause. So they're going into some things that like, we're not even very much aware of. Commerce Clauses, repealing the 17th Amendment, restoring judiciary to its proper role, limiting taxation and spending. But in none of these documents or none of these proposals does an amendment to the 13th Amendment exist. And, you know, that's our main goal is to remove the exception clause from the 13th Amendment. So this is a possibility for us to work with people who we normally wouldn't work with to get something like that done if we can get a seat at the table. But if we don't get a seat at the table, then I suspect that we'll have a bunch of racists, right-wingers, uh, Republican Party members backed by uh, m big money from ALEC and many other international corporations who will take over our Constitution and write it as they want it to be seen well, without us at the table right at all. Well, well, two things, Max. One of the things that caught my eye is that there's actually, uh, at, at present time, there's a... a uh, critical mass of states that's asking for a budget amendment to uh, curtail the uh, debt ceiling uh, for the federal government. Uh, and they actually have a, uh, over 34 states have actually signed on to that now. Uh, hmm. And there's a potential, and that's just a single issue that's a single issue that these states are, 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 are supporting and backing, but it's enough to actually have a challenge in the in the Supreme Court to force the Congress to actually uh, convene the constitutional amendment. So, but what concerns me about that is that if the federal government works off of borrowing money, creating national debt, uh, and they're always in debt because they're always overexpending, especially for the military. Uh, but if it's limited to only the money that they collect and they can't borrow any more money, then a lot of social programs are gonna be destroyed. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, Medicaid, a lot of food stamps, a lot of support for indigenous people, et cetera, that's gonna disappear. That concerns me more than anything else. Now, in reference to what you're saying about a seat at the table, I'm even more concerned about that because this particular group uh, and the group that's behind the momentum of it, they are all extremists. They all are basically conservative, neo, and, and they say that, they make that clear, that that's where they're coming from. And so even sitting at the table, and I, I go back to what Malcolm X says, you know, because you're sitting at the table, uh, don't make you a diner if everybody else is eating and you're just sitting there. So I'm kind of concerned about why would we, or why would we even want to be there when we know that everybody there had, doesn't have our interests at heart. I understand your concerns, but the way I look at it is like this. This is going down. There's enough money to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So are we going to sit back and just watch it occur? Uh, or should we try to come in and take it over? I mean, it's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. What we have been asked, as you said, the Black Panthers Party want to do the same thing. We have been asking for a convention of states or a constitutional convention now for years to amend the 13th. And here is the opportunity right in our faces. The only thing standing between us 
And that occurring is a bunch of racist demons, as normal, who are trying to control everything about this government. But this is our government. It's not their government. It's our government. And if more people were aware of this movement, which is occurring, maybe we can get enough people together to be able to carry some weight regarding what's about to occur. Maybe even put our own money behind making these things happen. So not just a seat at the table, but a seat of power and authority with many representatives. Okay, all right. I guess, I mean, that's a, that's a real possibility. When you said it's going down, I mean, it, it sounds to me like you're convinced that, that this time it will actually be successful and the uh, Constitution will be opened up again for changes? Yes, because of the hostile environment that exists now with this complete control by the Republican Party, and we know that many of them are right-wing, so they're taking this opportunity to make things happen. Let me just read something briefly uh, to you. It says, the ALEC Affiliated Ballots Budget Amendment Task Force, BBATF, which preferred the pledge signed by Senator Ted Cruz, is hoping to meet that 34 state threshold by July 4th. BBATF is one player in an astroturf movement backed by the billionaire Koch brothers and embraced by the right wing state legislators. A balanced budget amendment has long been a holy grail for the right since the 30s. In the 80s, conservatives made a push for a balanced budget constitutional convention, and 20 years later, the idea was resurrected as part of the Tea Party platform. That's when BBATF was formed to carry the movement forward. 16 resolutions held over from the previous wave of conservative activism, BBATF has since passed resolutions in Alabama, New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire, okay. Ohio. All right. Georgia. All right, Max, yeah. we're going to have to wrap it up. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to revisit this. Uh, we've watched the progress of it, see how close they come to uh, uh, getting that uh, uh, critical number of states between now and July. Yes. And I'm going to have you come back, and we're going to talk about this some more, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, and the only thing, if you can give me like a little brief summary of where the National March stands now for uh, the human rights of prisoners, and then we'll have to uh, close up. The uh, Millions for Prisoners Human Rights March, which information can be found on IamWeUbuntu.com, is growing by leaps and bounds. Just yesterday, uh, we had word that the Republic of New Africa is uh, also joining us, as well as uh, other organizations like NCOBRA. So this is something that is crossing all boundaries uh, amongst people who have concerns about what's happening today with human rights violations regarding prisoners in the United States of America. It'll be on August 19th in Washington, D.C. We feel that it is imperative that everybody who can be there. This has got to be something we have never seen before in order to show that we, the people, care about our prisoners and those people who are being incarcerated unjustly now all across America. So let's show our concern and show up. Okay, Max, thank you. And uh, we'll, we will revisit both of these things in the near future. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Eddie. I always appreciate what you have been doing. God bless. Okay. And thank you for joining The Real News.